Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Pro League. We've got an amazing presentation for you guys today. We'll probably end up splitting this into several different videos, but hey, this is going to be an insane, insane long cast. We've got Flash spawning here in the top right, and these games were played in 2020. So we're going a ways back here, but we'll take what we can get. These are courtesy of Dude Nerd once again, so shout out to him. This is going to be a lot of fun, guys. Uh, a lot of these games I don't think anyone has seen. This is a piece of history right here, what we're watching. These are not just games, guys. This is a blast from the past here. We've got Flash who hot off, well, not hot off, but recently finished his last ASL championship. I believe that was against Snow. Now, that was the very last time that he ended up winning uh, ASL, in fact, in Season 8. And then we had uh, Zero, aka Queen, win two in a row. That was uh, in the middle of 2020. And then this is going to be in December of 2020. And Flash here, he's going to be going up against Effort, who's spawning in the bottom left. Effort's gone for a 12 hatch. 11 pool, 10 gas. And we're going to be opening with a gas build here from Flash. So all of these in round number one, as with pretty much every pro league, uh, especially every major pro league, it's all random assignments for uh, who's playing against who in round number one. And then we're going to go to the king of the hill in round number two. And depending on who ends up winning that, um, if we, you know, have... Uh, the first one team win the first round the other team win the second round then we might go to that ace match now We're playing here on benzene This map if you guys remember Was a crazy map back in the day uh, You have like this weird high ground area over top of your natural. It's a two-player map uh, There's a lot of cheeky stuff that you can do here, and it's very hard to hold on against a mutilus harassment at that natural so you can see that Flash is not interested in playing just a straight up game. He wants to do some sort of 1-1-1. One, one, one. And how will Effort handle this? He's just now getting his Overlord over to the natural. He sees one Marine only. Is it time to throw down a sunken colony? Just a couple of links have been produced to chase this SCV around. It's not quite that time yet for sunken colony, but it soon will be. There it is. Starts the sunken colony here. He is completely aware. Uh, of the possibility of that vulture coming across the map. But it's not even being made here. Look at that flash. Just skipping over that. Is going to go for a command center and a starport. Command center before starport, in fact. Which is interesting. Not a typical build here from flash. He's trying to optimize somewhat. By not getting that vulture. Realizing that there is that sunken colony. It's just going to be denied. So that he can get the earlier command center and the quicker upgrades here. Will it be for a drop? That is a, a likelihood here. We might see speed. A couple of vultures. A wraith to push away the overlord. And then directly into uh, a add-on here and a drop ship. That's my guess as to what we might see. Yeah, I remember this. Power generator here. Dude, this is nostalgic right now. Benzene. I haven't seen this for a long time, but we watched so many ma uh, matches back in the day on this map. It was a real pain in the butt. I remember coming back to uh, remastered and playing this map uh, as Terran. I was back in the day. It was pretty rough. One Ling going to sneak by that vulture here. Might be able to run straight up into the main. Nope. It is going to get blocked. Maybe got a little bit of a view here of what's going on, but it didn't see this control tower, that's for sure. The Wraith with zero kills. It actually didn't find this Overlord here. Great job by Effort just kind of hiding that out out in on the map right now. Extra hatchery being added on here, but the Spire is about to finish. A few mutas will be made. The dropship on the way here. I think he's going to try to... Uh, distract with this wraith 
and then look to drop in the main. By the way, guys, have you noticed that the quality of the video has gone up? Um, I don't know if you're on your phone or if you're on your computer. You probably can't tell the difference, but all my boys out there who are watching on TV and who have been maybe complaining about the image quality, I really couldn't tell the difference, but I did some work on trying to uh, up the image quality. I looked up some guides. I even talked to Artosis himself. He gave me a couple of tips. Uh, so let me know if you're seeing any differences here. It's probably going to be a lot larger of a file size. So if it's worth it, let me know in the comments down below. We do have that dropship moving around the map. Let's see if this manages to get in and where the Mutalists are at uh, when that drop occurs. We got an Overlord here to spot, but the Mutalists are on the other side of the map. This could be devastating. Absolute devastating damage. He sees it the moment that it's coming in. He's going to turn his attention here, but oh, ho, 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 so sick. Dude, that burrow is insane. That completely negates this damage. He's going to be able to come in and clear all of this up. Uh, Vultures are going to run in here and try to get what little damage they can. I don't think he's even gotten a single drone. He's got maybe one so far. Oh, uh, uh, an Unburrow here a little bit too early. He does reburrow. And Unburrows again. All right, he is going to get back to work now. Cannot forget any drones. You can see there's one underneath here. There it is. And there's another one right there too. So you should better not forget those. Those could be under there for a while. If they're right in the middle uh, of the mineral line, <laughs> you might not ever see that. Uh, yeah, that could be bad. Okay, he does see it. All right. Picking up on that now. Hive is coming here. Third base is done. Wraiths are scouting around. Gonna fly in here. I think I saw Cloak finish up. So yeah, he does have that Cloak. We'll be able to push everything back here. We don't have Overlord Speed yet. And because we have Hive on the way, we can't get Overlord Speed for quite a long time. So these wraiths might come in and, you know, if they kill one of these overlords, then they kind of get free reign um, in some of these bases, which would be really painful. An overlord here in the top corner. Oh, we're going to go in snare to counter this. That is interesting. I wonder how that's going to work out. We're switching back into bio now as Flash, by the way. Uh, the <laughs> Wraith energy is very, very low on one of these anyway. Run by here into the natural? No. Just going to back away with these. A little bit of trading back and forth, but nothing too significant. Like that damage uh, that Flash managed to do, it wasn't the greatest amount of damage here. It just kind of slowed down a little bit this third base and the overall mining of effort. But effort's going to be fine here. He's going to continue along. With his build, and he's got a very fast hive, right? Ultralisk Cavern already. Wow, I was really expecting uh, more of a Hydralisk Defiler build, but okay. Right into Ultralisk, I guess. Wraiths are going to fly in once again. Got to be careful with those. They are paper airplanes. Got Scourge ready to defend, and Mass Drone sent over here to begin this mining at, thir at the third. One vulture on the map. We've only got one sunken colony. And one sunken colony does not deal that well with vultures. So we could actually take some damage. Um, only one vulture. Not that biggest. Not a big deal though. Uh, I'm, I'd be more so scared of like three vultures. Oh, ho, 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 he got it. That is wild. He got that. Big pick off here. Uh, in favor of effort. Effort slicing through this early tech. Picking off that first uh, vessel is absolutely massive. Can he get another? Ooh, bit of a late pullout on those uh, mutas, but he's going to go for it. Can he get it? I think he does. Oh, it's so close. No, not quite able to get that. And oh, an accidental burrow here by effort. Effort trying to get links to the front and utilize the sunken colony. Ah, I think this is just about to go down. The sunken colony is just a tiny bit late. The Marines are breaking through everywhere. Finally, an Ultralisk pops out, but going after the Nidus with the Wraiths turns out to be an amazing move. 
this ultra just getting blocked right now and more marines make their way up here ultras are popping out back at home but they've got no nidus to hop through to try and save this another sunken colony goes down three more ultra or, or overlords are going to fall and i think that flash has done it this timing with the marines although he did end up losing a science vessel and almost lost a second he just had the manpower the muscle to bust through effort at that key moment here as he was getting his ultralist finally online i think we've got plus only plus one here and yeah ling's just running into their death man that was like 12 lings dying for free right there and man feels good to be watching flash once again this guy just always at the cutting edge he makes terran look so overpowered whenever he plays but marines just looking broken as heck here and effort he's gonna stay in but his chances are drastically limited now he's not even got plus two armor yet he has the carapace but i'm sure we've got plus two here no not quite okay just plus one so even on the upgrades lings are gonna come in from a decent angle but this is just not enough ultras and they are going to get cut down. Effort should be leaving this game momentarily as he sees more and more Marines coming out here. And the vessel count continuing to rise. There's not much hope left. There's one more base down here at the bottom center. But Effort taps out and game one goes to Flash. Game number two here in the randomizer has given us a PvP shuttle spawning here in the bottom right hand corner on Team Flash versus bisu up here in the top left i don't even know what i would call this team it's so stacked with great players both these teams really are uh i don't know you know who <laughs> i'm gonna name this team after uh team bisu i guess maybe team effort it's crazy guys we have so many great games here i'm just so happy right now i cannot wait to get in uh, to the next game <laughs> we're gonna go to this one right now pvp not my specialty not my favorite matchup probably one of the main reasons i never played protoss just not a fan of pvp um maybe i would get into it if i really practiced it and and you know learn the ins and outs but too much of a coin flip i mean even zvz feels a little bit coin flippy to me um even though there's there's quite a bit of play in the modern age and you can always go for kind of a middle of the ground, a uh, middle of the road build, but uh, at least EVZ, it's pretty fast. That's that's kind of my reasoning why I decided to play Zerg, is that I'm not really a huge fan of ZVZ, but at least it's quick. I think a lot of people can sympathize with that. We're going to start out with the gate gas here on either side. Nothing out of the ordinary here thus far, but we'll have to keep an eye on who wants to get cheesy. Uh, who wants to go for an early expand? Who's going to get greedy? There's always that, like, rock, paper, scissors. Yeah, I would say both Z ZVZ and PvP are more like rock, paper, scissors than any other match. Only TVT really has more of a... Uh, like, more depth, I feel like, as a, a mirror matchup. Um, of course, once you get past the early game, then both all, all matchups have a lot of depth. I just fe I just feel like in the early game, uh, when you're picking your builds and you find out what the other player is doing, you're like, ah, oh, crap. Well, I guess I'm just behind. This is how it is. Uh, and we might just lose if you're talking about ZVZ. Let's say you go for a 12 hatch and they go for an 11 hatch, excuse me, and they go for a 9 pool speed. It's just pretty close to over. There are some people who can make that work, but uh, for me, generally, it just does not happen. I've tried many, many times pulling drones and all that good stuff. Anyway, guys, I'm talking about ZVZ. We're here in a PvP. We've got both players going for range. Wait a second. No. Hold up. Bisu not going for range. He's going to gamble it here. But the probe is about to walk into the base. I think he's going to have to cancel. Um, okay, wait, 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 wait. Okay, Shuttle doesn't actually go deep. He doesn't go deep at all. He doesn't even see the Cybernetics Core here. This is bad for Shuttle. I really thought he would come in and at least scout the Cybernetics Core, but he wanted to maintain that probe or preserve the probe so badly 
He didn't even go all the way in. And a second gateway starts. That's not what we need right now. We need a robo because this is DT's here for Bisu. We'll see a second gate thrown down here shortly. And then DT's all the way, man. This is going to be rough for Shuttle. If he doesn't start a robo right away, we could even see that sort of uh, rock, paper, scissors thing that I was talking about. Where, you know, Shuttle picks scissors and, well, Bisu picked rock. Let's see. Templar. Going to be started here in just a moment. Okay, just one gateway. He's going to put down a Nexus. One gateway right into Nexus here. Still no Robo. This is not looking good, guys. I think he's gearing up for a Nexus right now. I think that's uh I think that's a plan. Um there is some play like maybe you can block your ramp or something, but we still don't have a Okay, if Robo was on the way right now, maybe I would say like there's a pretty good chance. He didn't even go 3 gate. Is this Robo now? Yeah, there's the Robo. He wants to like climb or walk a reaver down the ramp here. But Dragoon's going across the map. First DT is out. And shuttle, I mean, at least it's not double gateway. At the very least, it's not double gateway. He should have seen that blur, but maybe he didn't. The second uh, DT is going to be here to help kill these dragoons. It's just going to make this attack completely worthless. Um, back at home, can he actually just hold the ramp for long enough? I think the DT is going to get in no matter what. Here we go. We're losing some probes, so some pretty good damage here. But there's the DT now dealing some damage, picking off these dragoons, or at least picking on the dragoons here. Dealing that damage, pushing them back. Pretty good micro here so far. Bisu having the micro on multiple fronts. He's actually chasing a dragoon away right now. He needs to get over here to this ramp as soon as possible. He's losing a lot. Dude, Bisu is down to 18 probes. This is kind of insane. The observatory finishes, but the DT will get in here. Great blocking, honestly, by Shuttle. Really great blocking, but probes are going to start to fall now. Just going to pull the probes, keep running around in circles. How many probes can we kill? Five have gone down so far. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, this is even now. <laughs> okay, now Beast is ahead. Okay, that's a lot of probes, guys. That is a lot of probes. Now he's finally going to go after the DT. Another probe kill. He finally, finally is going to kill that DT with 15 probes remaining and no Nexus at the natural. Yeah, I think it's safe to say that, well, he is a little bit dead at this point. Yeah, Bisu is going to win this game, I believe. We've got a shuttle. And what are we going to do with that? Well, we're going to get a Reaver and we're going to try something here. We've got quite a few goons and an Observer. Maybe there's a world. Hear me out, guys, where a Reaver and a bunch of Dragoons can kill Bisu here. Are, is this reality? Is this the reality that we live in? I'm not sure. We're going to find out here in a moment. But there is some reality out there. There is some layer of the multiverse where this actually, this comeback can actually happen. I'm trying to get a goon kill here. Almost gets that. Almost gets the the um, Dark Templar as well. Dark Templar going to go across the map right now. He has the Observer back at home, but he's actually rallied it over into his main for some silly reason. Um, right next to his Nexus. So that's not actually going to help him on the ramp here. A DT could come wandering in. All right, he's going to bring it to the front. The Reaver is about to pop, guys. We can't hardly afford to build anything, but we will get this Reaver out. He sees the shuttle. He sees two goons on the ramp. Two more goons are about to pop. We have to go straight across the, the map with everything that we can muster. More gateways are on the way right now. There's four cannons. How long is it going to take to bust through? And will Bisu be able to snipe this Reaver before it kills all the cannons? If he lands it, like, right there and sets up all his goons, like, like there, it's going to be very hard for goons to dive on that Reaver. 
Especially if you just pick up and go over the high ground. Can't really um, target that too easily. Dark Templar is actually going to head back home. He's going to leave one observer back here. Two goons, maybe leave them at home as well. I'm not sure. Maybe he sends everything. He needs to kill this right now. More cannons are being built. BC realizes how far he is ahead right now. He's 12 probes up. But if this breaks him, then the game completely flips back on its head. Storm is on the way. Halfway done right now. We have to break through right now. Raver doing its job. Starting to hit these photon cannons. Dealing that little bit of damage. He actually needs to get closer. We don't want to allow the dragons to just run up right now. I'm going to try to pick on this pylon. There's only one pylon here. If he goes after the pylon, dude, the pylon, there's only one. This is the biggest artosis pylon I've seen. Go after it. Get it. Kill the, kill the pylon. Oh my god, he's killing cannons right now. Another pylon starts. If this pylon dies, dude, that would be so insane. That's like five cannons that wouldn't be powered. Um, He's not really going after it. He's sort of hitting it, but the pylon in the back will eventually warp in and save that. Okay, he eats two shots here. Oh, there's a GT on the other side of the map. Um, it's not actually going to matter here. Great job with the Reaver. He's actually doing a whole bunch of damage with these Reaver shots, picking off a lot of this. He's actually getting in here. Oh, the storm! The storm dealing so much damage. He will pick up the Reaver. And a second storm should finish the job. No, he picks up the Reaver again. He keeps it alive. There's only one cannon left. Dropping this Reaver now. And he's going to go after the probes. Or should he go after the cannon? He goes after the cannon here. He's almost going to kill this Nexus. This Nexus. Still alive for now. But Bisu in a struggling position here. Can he dive on this Reaver? The Reaver is everything right now. Oh, God. He's not dropping the Reaver. He's going after the shuttle. Oh, pick up the Reaver. No. He doesn't pick it up, and all the dragons will end up going down. The probes survive for the most part. 23 of them left. And so the dragoon will just run in here and die, and it looks like Bisu has held. This is not that universe, guys. This is our universe. The one where Bisu wins this PvP. Ah, he didn't even bring the shuttle over here. His name is Shuttle. Bring the shuttle, man. What is happening? Yeah, these dragons are going to get driven back now. That six kill Dark Templar has been in this game for far too long. It's probably going to get picked off here. No. Still alive for now. 25 probes to 18. We are still going to stay in this game and try our best to make this comeback. We've got one more uh, Reaver about to pop out, but the shuttle could get picked off. This shuttle is everything right now. We have to keep that alive. And DT here, gonna run up into the main. Okay, I think that's it. That's gotta be it. That has got to be it. This DT is just gonna run right in here. Oh, okay, there's one more observer. The observer actually staying back at home. Saves the day here, but Bisu has so many dragoons, man. He's just got way too many. He's got so many gateways. He's got five gateways to the two here of shuttle, and there's just no money for shuttle to actually produce. Well, he's got some money, I guess, but... He's not nearly able to produce as much as Bisu right now. I don't know if Reavers can make the difference here. He's going to come in and take this fight. He sees those Dragoons. Dragoons going to move around the left-hand side. He's coming up towards the natural. Bisu going to open the way for him, but he has a big concave here. This is where he wants to fight coming down from the high ground in a large concave. Yeah, this is going to be it. The Reavers drop out. And they get big shots here. They will get great hits, but... There goes the Reavers getting picked off immediately, and Shuttle leaves the game. Another win here. This time on the side of Bisu Squad. As we jump into game number three. Here we go. Non-mirror matchup now with Stork versus Organ, aka Piano, our caster. I know a lot of you guys were mentioning that you don't know who Piano is or Organ is. Um, from the last video of Pro League that we did back in 2021. He was a very strong player. And I, I'm sure he probably still is. He tries to get into ASL. Um, sometimes failing, sometimes managing to qualify. But he rarely goes deep these days. He's more of a caster. Uh, he is our co-caster for the KCM most times. And uh, I mean, not my co-caster, but KCM's co-caster. Uh, and he does very well for himself in that regard. He's very good on camera. 
And I'm sure he brings a lot of insight to the Korean cast, which is fantastic. Nice to, fi uh, to see pro players finding uh, other uses and other talents uh, aside from, you know, just their pro play, just their strong Terran or Protoss play. Uh, they can look for other ways to monetize their skills. And it's excellent to see uh, Piano here showing up very well for himself here at Pro League. And I want to see more great games from him. I'm sure you guys do too. Is Stork going to give him a good game or is he going to give him some cheese? Well, a gateway out in the front here means that probably Stork is going to rally Zealots towards Oregon. How he can handle that though remains to be seen. He didn't kill one of his first workers, so he's probably going to be okay. Uh, effort, if you guys remember. Killed his own worker twice in a previous round of Pro League. You guys can go watch that. I'll maybe put a link up here uh, to those replays that I casted earlier this week. Um, yeah, where he killed his own <laughs> drone and then beat Stork, and he did it twice. Uh, oh, man, it's it's got to be embarrassing. But um, this is not that. This is Organ. Um, and also TVP, which is, I would probably say, a, a tougher matchup. Um, at least from my perspective. I think that ZVP is tough, but it is a lot more doable than TVP. A lot less restrictions. And um, there are a lot more opportunities to actually kill the Protoss uh, as a Zerg player than there is for, for a Terran player. Uh, which is one of the reasons why I didn't want to play Terran anymore. Um, there's just so many pro Protoss on the ladder. And <laughs> TVP is so brutal. Uh, we've got the Zealot coming in here first. With that probe. Going to start to chase down this one Marine. Let's see if he can get on top of that. Going after that SCV on the factory. Always a great choice. Did take quite a bit of damage though. Ooh, not able to go th between the uh, supply depots here. Oh, it's so hard to get those Marines to move properly. He does get in between, but another Zealot comes up here. He just manages to kill that one Zealot, but he loses two Marines now. Gonna have to play a little bit of Ring Around the Rosy here. Try to slow down the Zealot for a little bit longer, but it catches up. Kind of crazy. They both seem like they have similar move speed, but... The Zealot able to catch the Marine there. And he's going to get another Marine. Oh my goodness. That's, I think, four Marines that have died for the two Zealots, which is... Yeah, it's worth it. It's worth it here. Oh, look at that. Um, I believe this is called Polaris Rhapsody. I can't... Uh, don't, don't quote me on that one, though. I think that's what this one is called, but I, I do remember these giant areas behind the mineral patches were pretty unique. Uh, for the times and look at that stork is gonna hide the zealot and he sends it into the main moments after this leaves and this is gonna get the biggest scout ever he's gonna see a two gate or two factory excuse me coming after uh as a follow-up here and this is huge absolutely massive he's slowing down this two factory and more importantly he's actually scouting that this is what's coming He's even getting a goon in here as well. Oh my god, this is going to be so brutal. We've got one tank at home, but... Oh, wait, a vulture makes its way into the main base here during all this. He gets three kills. Not bad. The gateway going to start right now, and a nexus coming down as well. Supply depot. Mines being researched and tank on the way here, along with another vulture. Marines are being produced still. Because he needs a little bit more oomph with this army. He needs something else. Three goons are coming across the map. If he gets caught on the low ground, I think he's going to just tap out. Now you're going to lose a tank here, bud. That is going to be terrible. Two more gateways. I think that Stork has the perfect counter to this. And it is going to be lights out here for Oregon. He got absolutely fooled here by Stork. And Stork, I mean, okay, okay, okay. He kills two goons. Oh, he loses the tank, though. If he kept that tank alive, this might have actually been doable. This might have actually happened for Piano. Killing three goons and not even losing one tank? Maybe he could come across the map and set something up, but he just lost a tank. He's getting Vulture's speed right now. 
And he's going to run in. Oh, he gets that goon. Okay, not bad, not bad. Let's set up some mines out here at the front. Sending tanks across the map. Does he have eBay? No. He'll probably have to make a bunker. And slow push this. Siege mode is on the way. He's going to try to lay a mine in the front. Mine just gets immediately gunned down. Vulture's coming up here. One more mine can be laid. He's targeting onto the tanks. That means the vultures are going to get get to lay some of their mines. Oh, one more goon goes down. We don't have an SCV here. We need another SCV badly. Oh my gosh. He loses a tank. All right, if he kept that tank alive, this would be a much easier attack. But with that one tank going down, all right, the mines are actually blocking here. Can he get both of them? Oh my God, he got both. How did that even happen? Yeah, he's going to get this tank, unfortunately, for Piano. He cannot continue this attack. He's going to be able to rally Vultures still across the map, but the tank number is just too low. We don't even have one, actually. It's just pure Vultures being rallied here right now. And the Observer does come out. Dude, so many things could have gone just a tiny bit better for Oregon, and he might have been able to pull this off, even though he got scouted. But things are going just a little bit too much Storks way here and yeah piano's not gonna be able to do anything it looks like he's gonna send some vultures in here for one last desperate hope that maybe he could slip by into the main or the natural uh to get a bunch of uh, probe kills and try to uh, slow down stork a little bit here but stork's just gonna come straight across the map and all there is is just mines to defend so he kills the mines and now he's gonna kill the cc there's nothing that Oregon can do about it He's building a tank right now, but he is just down and out so bad right now. Stork, he could, uh, you know, go get a coffee, chill. He doesn't really need to do anything at this point. He is so far ahead. I think even if, like, a plane hit his house or a plane engine hit his house, he could probably still uh, play this one out and win. Donnie Darko style. Let's see. Piano being really fancy with the tank here but yeah we could just go out of range of that hit the cc cc gonna die cc gonna die oh 300 hp 200 hp 150 hp 50 60 20 10 it goes down i think he canceled no he didn't cancel and the dragons will run away gg is called nothing else to do in this game looks like a last vulture went down on the other side of the map and that is it Dude, a really unfortunate game here for Oregon. Just not expecting a zealot to be back here. When he was sending out his vulture, if he had just checked there, he would have found that, killed it easily, and then his two factory might have been successful. But despite even getting scouted, it was still a kind of close game. It was, it was still almost doable. And there was some great micro from Oregon to try and make that happen, but Stork... Just being Protoss and having four gates, just pumping Dragoons, it's very hard to overcome, especially once that Observer comes out. It's Im almost impossible to push in with Vulture and Tank and in that low number and try to take a win from there. So, Oregon gets out of this game. Stork takes another win home for his team, and we're going to jump into game number four. Well, here's a matchup I actually know something about. Look at this, Larva. Over here at the bottom right hand corner, Soma in the bottom left. Not saying I don't know anything about PvP, but I'm sure my knowledge is lacking. Uh, PvT too. I know that there's a lot that I don't know. And that's kind of the way that knowledge is, right? The more you know, the more you know that you don't know. Soma here. One of the greats. Larva, one of my favorite Zerg players of all time. Absolute character. Of course, hasn't won an ASL at this point. But he is just coming into his own here at, in 2020. One of the most popular streaming personalities in Korea. Hilarious guy. And so much is such a strong competitor. Such a dangerous Zerg player. So incredibly strong with his Mutalist Micro. 
And back in 2020, he was shining with that Mutalist Micro, always or very often going into like two Hachimuta play whenever he was against Terran players and pulling them apart brutally. Here he's going to be going for a nine pool speed, it looks like. We'll see if he actually goes for speed immediately, well, whereas Larva goes for a 12 hatch. This is exactly what I was talking about, guys. Is this going to be a rock, paper, scissors loss here for Larva? It's really looking like it right now. But you know what? Okay, he does have six lings popping out immediately. Perfectly executed here by Soma. No surprise there. The spawning pool has just started here for Larva, so we are in a really bad spot. And does this remind you guys of anything? You guys remember this map? We're not going to see it for too much longer. Overmind cocoons here at the front and the double eggs. This was a wild one. I was on the ladder for quite some time. Gave me a lot of headaches, but... We're just going to be looking at this from a ZVZ perspective. No need to uh, really worry too much about the map. Oh yeah, this is in the back natural, right? This is a little island base back here. Sort of semi-island base. Inside the main. Lings are going to come in now. We've got one sunken colony. It's on the way, and some lings, four lings. He's gonna fight with drones. I guess in this, uh, on this map, it's not as bad, right? We have to run way to the back. It's not like we're just already hitting the hatchery for a long time here. He's gonna start the egg at the natural uh, quite a bit later, and pulling the drones here, bringing the lings. Okay, this is a pretty good fight for Soma right now. He actually surrounded a lot of the, the uh, lings of Larva there immediately. Drones being pulled here to the back. And it looks like he might just barely hold. There's the Ling Speed though. Ling Speed makes this just that much harder. Having the Sunken in the main means he can actually hold on pretty well. But look at that. Every time he gets an opportunity to just gun down one Ling uh, by itself, he'll take it. Oh, Larva just barely going to win this fight though. More Lings being produced and I think he might have done it. I think he has just barely managed to do it here. One drone going to be sent back towards the main. He really wants to get some saturation going there. Not not more than one drone per patch here at the uh, natural. I'm going to start to add some more drones back now. He's at 10 drones to the 8 of his opponent. But Spire is on the way and it's been non-stop. Absolutely non-stop link production. You can see he hasn't even built a single additional drone in this game so far. He's just continuing to produce links. And he might actually get surrounded here. We have link speed finished. Doesn't quite lose that link. Keeping that alive is important. Back at home, he's setting up the ling wall. Aspire is coming. Nearly complete right now. Are we going to have an evolution chamber defense? That spire, right as it's finishing up, is about the time when you need to start that evolution chamber, unless you're just going to keep pressuring with links. Five drones on the way. We should see an evolution chamber here any second. There's the spire finishing. Where do you put the evolution chamber here? And where should you put your spores? This is a very interesting map to have this type of situation unfold. There's the evolution chamber, right as the mutas are being produced. Is it too late? It feels a little bit late to me, but I don't know the exact timings on this. I guess I should defer to effort in this regard, because he is the expert here. Liking to per, uh, Preferring to play kind of an off-brand style of ZVZ, whereas some of the much more uh, standard player... In that he likes to just go for these nine pool, uh, the, yeah, the nine pool builds, and uh, you know rely more on his mutilus micro to win games. We just gonna come up here, lings trading right now. If you trade lings out right now as uh, larva, it's actually pretty decent. It it actually works out pretty well for you, um, as long as you're killing uh, lings of Soma, you're always gonna have more larva, so it's it's not too bad. I mean, he's going to try and kill this sunken colony or this uh, creep colony here. 
Another one gonna be made. Oh god, he's bringing the drones, dude. This is so insane. I'm gonna start making creep colonies over here. And the Mutas will probably come forward to try and snipe this creep colony. Lings are gonna come out and try to fight right now. One more drone is available. He's gonna run into this bottom uh, corner base. He's actually gotta bring the Lings down here. What is he doing? Oh, he's diving on the creep colony right now. This is a great move. Realizing that there's a small uh, area of uh, undefended space right now. Gets the maximum value here, kills that creep colony, and this has been completely dismantled now by Effort. Effort has absolutely held this. So, so well done here. This was such a dirty, difficult situation for Effort, but now you can see Soma. Last resort here. He's just going to try and kill this hatchery with his mutas right now. And Lings are actually going to counterattack during this. There's one sunken colony back at home, but you can see he's got no drones at all. He pulled three drones to try and fight this. Remember that. 200 HP. 180. This is getting very, very low. He actually might kill this, but I don't know if it's even going to matter, honestly. 50. At 50 HP, pulls away 30. 2 HP. He loses one more muta. He kills it. He kills the hatchery, and I don't think he did it. Hardly any damage over here to Soma's economy. Six drones to 13. But he can rebuild this hatch. You've already got the spores here. It's well defended. Just rebuild it. It's absolutely doable. We've got so many more drones to be able to make that happen. Lings are coming across the map. Mutas are coming across the map now. The only thing that Soma has in advantage is these three mutas. That is it. He's not building any more. He's got 200 gas banked up. But he's making drones right now. He's going to try and bring this one back through a macro game. He had to kill that hatchery. That was his only option in that scenario. Now Aspire is going to come down here. Nicely placed Spire. Really does block up the, the space here uh, for trying to get on top of this. But it is kind of out in the open. I don't know if that's going to come into play. Uh, Lynx can definitely surround that on at least two sides. So, uh, a little bit rough in that regard. He's checking the back. There is a hatch coming down here. Larva trying to run away. Doesn't want to lose these lings, but it looks like they're all going to go down. Hatcheries are going to finish up at nearly the same time here. It's going to be close. This is wild. This is a really crazy ZVZ, guys. I'm loving it right now. The sunken push from... Soma was absolutely insane, but actually Larva held it uh, better than perfectly, man. He just stomped it. Absolutely stomped it. Really, really well done by him. He's going to make a couple evolution chambers here at the front. Again, Larva, one of my favorite Zerg play players of all time, and you can just see why. He knows. He's like, okay, your one move is you snipe my Spire right now. And remember, there was a lot of surface area on that. But he built the uh, double, or he was going to build the double evolution chamber to cut off that surface area so that it couldn't be sniped. And it's just such a smart play. It is so, so genius right here. Larva, the brain on this man. Giga brain. But he's going to save the Spire. Spire here uh, means that Mutas are going to start to come out. The second gas is done. It is mining. He's four drones ahead. There's only one, one Muta, two Mutas. For Soma. So it's not even like he has a huge Muta advantage or anything like that. A third hatch is going to go down, which will eventually give Soma a larva advantage, but it's it's going to take a long time for that to happen. <clears throat> and by that time, I think that we're going to have way more Mutas on the field here for Larva. He's got four more in production, and he's already got three. There's only two on the field for Soma, so... We're going to see a big advantage here as he picks off more overlords. He stops, halts the uh, production right now of Soma. Soma's just building overlords. He's building three overlords. He's got two Scourge and two Mutas. A uh, third Muta just popped out. But look at that. Six, seven Mutas right now for effort and... He, or for, for, excuse me, Larva. And he can go straight across the map with these and probably just win this game right now. Uh, which I'm a little bit surprised he's not doing. Uh, but I guess he's just going to wait maybe on this 
Spire to finish the sec or the carapace upgrade, maybe? I'm a little bit uh, surprised about that. Wasn't expecting him to wait for that upgrade to come through. But, I mean, that does give him a big advantage. Okay, this is, this is actually going to finish at the same time. So it will not give him a, a, a very big advantage here. But maybe... I don't know. I don't know, guys. What do you guys think this is going to look like here in a moment? It's going to be a lot of mutas on both sides. And that actually could result in a Soma victory if he is good enough with the control. That's a lot more Scourge, I think, for Larva. Larva going to come in here, snipe a couple of drones, I think, and just run away. Yeah, three drones go down, and then he doesn't even need to actually engage this. He's got the Scourge. He's got the Mutas. Here we go. Pretty good engagement here so far on both sides. Both players sniping a lot of the enemy's Scourge. Looks like that's going to go. Oh, he sacked some Scourge into that Overlord by accident. That's not good. And a, a Scourge connects here for Soma. Ooh, Soma's actually doing a much better job of controlling right now, but look at that. Just too many mutas right here on the side of Larva. Larva is dancing his mutas here. More Scourge pop out, but I think we can just patrol Micro away from this, and yeah, he's got 10 mutas to 3. 10 mutas to 4 now. A lot more Scourge pop out. So I'm going to try and take this fight. Can he get the Scourge to connect? One does, but more Scourge arrive here for Larva. Oh, we're going to take this fight, I think, pretty handily now. Especially after he's already done that damage. And, oh, uh, yeah, he gets another Scourge Connect there. Moving back around to the third. Or to the to the natural. Oh, he's dancing his Mutas. Styling on him. He's going to kill some more Overlords. He gets another Muta there. Oh, the dancing. No, don't do it to him. Larva, do not style on him like that, man. GG. Soma taps out. Larva is victorious. Holy. That was a wild game, guys. So much fun to watch there. That ZVZ was an absolute treat. What a crazy one. You don't often get games like that, but you don't often see maps like this either. With the base in the background, where it's possible to have just a sunken here and then defending on low ground and the fighting back and forth was insane. What a fantastic ZVZ. I wish all ZVZs were something like that, but it's so nor uh, so uh, often the case where we just get kind of a average looking ZV ZVZ with more of a coin flip aspect. This time, you know what? Larva has inspired me. He managed to hold on. Maybe it was just due to the fact that this was um, a uh, such a special map with that back hatchery the hatchery in the background but he pulled off a 12 hatch versus a nine pool speed i mean that is just insane just crazy that it defies all logic but he managed to make it happen really really impressed with this guy guys we're gonna jump into our next game before i just explode here and how excited i am for watching more larva games we're all tied up here going into our next game going back to the randomizer to figure out our next match and it's going to be effort versus shuttle shuttle here in the top right hand corner of eclipse effort in the bottom left he does not opt to kill one of his drones <laughs> i was maybe like half expecting it actually um after we saw him do that versus stork i would put stork and shuttle uh, in the same territory, if not in the same room uh, as each other in terms of their skill level. Uh, I'm not sure about in 2020, but yeah, they're they're kind of like, I mean, you guys might disagree with me on that uh, point, but uh, Stork is kind of falling off at this point. I don't know. Man, he was just such a legend in the Kespa era. How many times did he go second place? He's like the king of silver for the longest time. And then he finally got you know, OSL or MSL championship. I can't remember which. And just such a huge moment for him. But wasn't it Shuttle who took home a victory in like ASL season one or something like that? I think he was one of the few players who just, like, kept playing. Yeah, okay, it was season two. 
Season 2, he 3 0 Sharp for the finals. So he was one of those few players who stuck around and just played all the way through StarCraft 2 before Remastered. And um, he was very strong at the beginning of Remastered, but he did uh, not quite measure up to the old greats like the Flashes and Efforts and uh, Queen and them t those type of players. He is an extremely popular player, though, uh, in terms of his Pro League success and his online success for streaming. Incredibly, incredibly popular. Does do a fairly good job blocking here against Effort's drone, but Effort does, in fact, get that down. And he will go for the third base here at the center left, as you do. A few links being popped out, and this is a gateway first here. Just gonna keep those zealots back at home. Effort insanely good with his early link control, so you cannot be underestimating that. You gotta put the probe on the ramp with the zealot. Okay, he doesn't do that. <laughs> he might get in trouble here. We'll see. We'll see if Effort can actually run by this. Okay, let's see, let's see. If he gets by this, he could just gun down one of the probes and get into the main, and then you have a real problem. Third zealot is about to pop. So when three Zealots are done, I think you can just make a wall here and be pretty safe. But no more Lings are being produced. It was just a little bit of a poke. I'm gonna keep one Ling out here. This is kind of sneaky. He's pretending like he sent these three Lings back home to chase the probe. He's hiding them over here. Now if Shuttle thinks that those are coming to chase the probe, he might send you know three, four Zealots across the map to go put the pressure on, and then these three links can run into the main. Uh, and that could net uh, effort a pretty sizable advantage. No, he is going to send the links back home now. He was thinking about trying that play, but Shuttle not going to be baited here. Um, we're instead just going to go ahead and throw down that forge. What a funny position for that forge. He's really pulled it back quite far. If he puts a cannon there, it's really going to defend the forge quite well. Cybercore here. Oh, probe was in the main. It saw that there was no layer. Um, and we're not actually mining gas right now. Are we going to go for a fourth? Four, four hatch play? That might be a possibility. We're definitely not going to go Hydro Bust without any gas. So what is he going to do right now? Hatchery. Fourth hatch. Back onto gas. I assume. No. Hmm. Well, this is interesting. I'm not sure what we're going with here. Definitely going to get that speed. But how is he going to defend his overlords against this uh, Corsair that's coming? Are we going to see Evolution Chamber? There's the gas. And I think we're going to get a Hydroden soon. A fifth hatch. These are some really quick hatcheries right now. One Zealot managed to slip out onto the map. And I'm going to finish here. This Zealot could be big, although there are some lings in the natural uh, that should be able to find this. Yeah, it looks like he's going to spread these lings around. And as soon as he runs into that Zealot, he should just find it and pick it off. There we go. He's going to bring these together and deal with that. Let's pull it back. Oh, not quite. Zealots head out on the map as soon as the lings leave the front. Some pretty good play from Shuttle. Looking for openings right now. He's really hidden these well. Can he just run into the third right now when uh, Effort's not paying attention? I think he's going to get caught in the middle and probably just destroyed. Four Zealots are likely to go down here because Effort has more than enough links to deal with those. All right, they're going to try to run back home, but it's not going to happen. Citadel's on the way here. Corsair is about to pop. Back at home, we're producing Hydras. Here's the big surround. It's looking quite good right now for Effort. A few lings do get picked off, but this is some great control here. He's just going to handle those easily. Back at home, there's a great wall, so can't really break through this, I don't think. With just the, the placement here on the Zealot, it's going to be a little bit too hard to get in there. But he's going to go right up to six Hatch Hydra immediately. Start, it starts the layer. Eventually, you do need to get Overload Speed, of course, maybe even Aspire. But for now, Evolution Chamber... Hydroden is enough and just pure dronage from here five drones start 
uh, as he realizes that he has full control to four gates four gates zealot speed plus one we're gonna see a big zealot attack very very soon from shuttle but i think i think that effort has the counter for this he has pretty decent sim city here as long as he rallies all his hydras to this sp spot and sim city here is very nice as well um just keeping hydras in this little nook here should stop anything from coming in i believe this is tight zealot type but i'm not 100 percent sure on that it really doesn't look like it but i'm sure that effort's not going to make that mistake at least i'm 90 percent sure this was a very popular map for a very long time um a lot of games played on eclipse so i assume that effort has that figured out at least and Corsairs going to come in here and there, but Hydras are in full production. Some Zealots are going to pop out. Or Lings are going to pop out. Wait, Lings. Okay. Jumping on the cannon over here. But I think the real story is these Zealots. Maybe not. Lings doing a good job. A lot of Zealots. Yeah, he can run in here. Oh, man. I'm a little bit scared for effort right now. He doesn't have a building on this side. He's going to build one right now. This is a great move. Popping out the building right at this last second. And clogging up this area. Uh, the... Uh, uh, overlords are going to end up going down. Corsairs are doing their work. Can stop the drones and help the, uh, use them to help fight. Lings are coming in handy right now, but the plus one is done. So they clean up, clean them up pretty good. One GT going to try and make its way into the natural. There's a big opening right here. Corsairs are going to dive on top of this. DT going to run in. DT going to be focus fired by the Hydras. Hydras doing a pretty decent job here, but they do not hold that ramp. And the DT is now in the main. Overlord speed is done, though. DT on the prowl right now, killing off a lot of these. But drones actually, citizens arrest here. Can they finish it off? Oh, it's so close. It's so close. He does get it. Zealots over here. Fighting against the sunken colony. That sunken colony was clutch, let me tell you. That thing just saved, I think, Effort's life in this game. Because he was in a really bad spot with the Zealots coming in. He manages to block up a bunch of this space. And he also holds off a lot of these Zealots. More Zealots running in right now, though. Uh, trying to make this game as scrappy as possible. They, it is an opening! Oh my goodness. Effort, no! How did you leave that opening there, Effort? That's so bad. He puts down an evolution chamber to try and block, but that's not a block. The Zealots can run right past that. More overloads are probably going to go down, but there's only one Corsair left, so maybe, just maybe, he can keep all of these alive. Yeah, with the overload speed, he can keep running away here. And Shuttle not able to deal the killing blow right now. And Effort, I mean, he's already got six hatches, he's got a ton of drones. He's at 47 to 48. We don't have a lot of tech here for Shuttle either. He's just now getting all of his gates up. And he's getting into his Templar. He's, of course, got Storm, but... I, I feel like this is a good spot for effort. He's done a great job of holding all this off. And just look at his drone count, man. His drone count is so healthy right now. His Spire is going to come up. He can go for a fourth if he wants. He can just mass Hydra if he wants. He can try to block this third. He can play, you know, aggressive. He can play passive here. He has a lot of options right now. There's a lot of Templar in the natural, but not sending out the Templar with this. Oh, loses the Corsair with this probe. So the probe probably going to end up going down. Killing his own egg right now. Going to open up that area for more Zealots to slip out. Oh, the catch here. Really, really good by effort. Getting a couple more Zealot kills and lowering that count. Drone over here. Ready to take this fourth base, but... Might not be a good idea to start that right now. Yeah, these Zealots can target that. Uh, yeah, that was a little bit of a mistake. Probably better to just hide that drone in a moment like this. And now he's going to have to send out another one. And I think Shuttle could maybe snipe that. Oh, no, he's not going to. Okay. That drone will make it over there to the fourth base. And we should see the probe make its way here to the third. 
Let's take a look at the upgrades. Plus one is done. Plus one one is done here for shuttle. Good amount of Templars here, but wait, where are the rest of the Templar? Okay, they're actually going into the main base. He's maybe a little afraid of something coming in here. It's not like he has drop, right? There was no drop. I'm not sure what these Templar are doing up here. Hydra's just checking out everywhere. We have a lurker aspect on the way. Are we just going to stay on... Okay, there's the Mutalus transition. Wow. That is a good chunk of Mutas. Ten Mutas pop out all at the same time. They're headed to the front. Looks like this probe might spot that. But what is uh, Shuttle's response? He needs like a Maelstrom or something, but he just doesn't have it. He's got a lot of Dragoons. But he's got no cannon in the main. Storm? Oh, the storm is actually very good. Second storm, not so much. Third storm, uh, all right. And another storm comes down. Archon being made here. Going after that Archon, seeing if he can pick it off before it finishes. He does. Another storm goes down. Pretty decent. These mutas are badly banged up. All he gets is like three probes and an Archon. Baits a few storms. That's, I mean, it's all right. It's not too bad. That's two Templar killed, right? The two Templar that we're trying to make into an Archon. Not exactly what he was looking for, but... These uh, Mutas are still able to one-shot. Potentially more Templar. I'm gonna fly around and look for more opportunities here. More Mutas being made right now. He's staying on this uh, Lair Tech. Leaving a bit of an opening for... Uh, shuttle. And that he's not going to be, like, lurkering up the whole map and going for Hive. He's staying a little bit low tech right now. And there are options here where maybe Shuttle could you know, take a great fight and get some good storms and uh, win this game. It's potentially possible. Here comes those Mutas looking for the Snipes. Good storm to ward those away. But now there's not as much storm for the next fight. Templar actually heads back home. Uh, since it has no energy left. More Zealots. More Templar coming up here. The Mutas. When are they going to dive in? Storm's coming down. There's the Mutas diving. The dive comes through. Some of the Templar are getting shot down. One, two, three, four. Templar gets shot down. A good storm here in the middle. But most of the Templar are gone. In fact, all the Templar are gone. And Ever just going to pull the trigger. Unburrowing most of his lurkers. And rushing forward here. Do we have another Templar? There it is. One more big storm here could change the tides. That's a pretty decent one, but I don't think it's going to be enough. One more big storm there does go down, but the uh, Dragoons are going to have to back up towards high ground. Lings and Hydras pushing everything back right now. Dragoons are going to have to retreat. A third base is on the way. Has some cannons coming up here. But we've got insane production for effort now. And the bulk of the army here was killed for shuttle. 100 supply to 105. We're pretty even right now in terms of that supply. And I think that favors effort. Effort, although his tech is like a little bit low right now, he doesn't have the hive. He will soon. He starts the evolution chamber and queen nest combo. The transition combo here. The value pack of buildings and we're gonna go into some more lurkers i think and do more of a defensive play from for, for effort from here he will be heading up towards that crackling lurker composition and this is gonna buy some time for us uh shuttle to maybe get another base online he's not quite mined out of the main and natural yet but he does need a fourth base sooner rather than later getting set up for the big defense over here Effort not taking any chances. Morphing a lot more lurkers. Setting up a position in the middle of the map as well. Not leaving any openings here for shuttle to abuse. Shuttle reacting to the movements of effort around the top of the map very well. Bringing his Templar and the majority of his army along. To make sure that there are no opening, openings in his defense as well. Sending a small counterattack of zealots around the map. But that'll be met by a lot of lurkers ready at this natural. Running through that would be suicidal. And it looks like 
We're in a suicidal mood here. A lot of those zealots taking a huge amount of damage. Some lings here pulling back. Not even going to let those die, actually. Effort. Really, really good here. Getting the max value out of his units. A lot of times, at this point in the, in the game, you know, you've got four bases online. Your money will be skyrocketing. And you're going to have so many lings that it's almost a burden to start using them all. So... A lot of times you'll see Zerg players just throw their lings away and just to hope for some sort of little tiny bit of value, but Effort not that guy. He's going to be running around these lings and keeping them alive for an inordinate amount of time, scouting out the whole map, looking for opportunities to snipe, and that's just uh, an indicator of the quality of his play. Now, this is going to be scary. That's so many lurkers. Unfortunately, uh, for Shuttle, I mean, he wasn't paying attention. There's like five, maybe seven lurkers in a stack there that he could have hit with one storm and softened them all up, but he doesn't go for that. And now this base is completely held <laughs> by effort. You're not getting in there. That's just not going to happen. We should have Defiler mound done. It is. We have upgrades, though. I didn't see any in the production tab. There it is. Consume now starts. So still a little ways off from those defilers being a factor here. Still effort is just flooding the map. Dude, he has so much macro. These extra two hatches at the fourth, they're allowing him to produce an insane number of units right now. It's exactly how you want to do it. Right as you take your fourth, you add on two macro hatcher hatches. Right up to 70 drones. The amount of units, it's actually, it, it's a really impressive skill just macroing out this much uh, as a Zerg player. You're macroing from so many different hatches at so many different locations. Doing that while controlling army units is next level. It's kind of insane. Small skirmishes here in the middle. Trying to take the best possible trades is shuttle effort as well doing a lot of storm dodging there and as you can see this map is starting to split in half this is a two-player map so it's possible that one player gets the bottom right and one player holds the top left but it's going to be very tough for her shuttle to hold this base and try to hold this base down here at the same time because as soon as he moves his army down here to try and take over this area very quickly a dark storm can come down here and an army can move forward to start to kill that base. There we go. Dark Swarm here on the low ground. Now it is an absolute no-go zone. You're not getting in there. No way, Jose. Reavers are starting to be made here for a shuttle. And this is kind of his one saving grace right now. Maybe there's a chance he can put together enough Reavers on this base to where he doesn't need to bring his army over here anymore. That he can just have his army out on the map and the reavers with the defense reaver templar and cannon to keep this base alive while he goes and attacks somewhere else or maybe attacks this base or tries to hold this base down here he is now ahead in supply but the quality of army is getting higher and higher right now oh, i just heard a shuttle go down i don't know where that was just missed it i'm probably not going to picture and picture it sorry guys uh, these, these are some really long days of casting. Um, so if there's something that like really massive gets missed, then I'll probably picture and picture it. But for the most part, I'm going to be skipping that step. We've got a lot of lings being produced right now. Huge number. And there's the drop play too. You've got to start to think here as effort. I need something extra. I need a little more oomph. What's it going to be? Plague? Of course. We need that plague. But maybe going into drop play here is going to give us an ability to make this game crazy to where we can take down shuttle here. He's been sitting on four bases for quite some time. Here comes the plague. There's the big plague at the front. Excellent job. Can he get this? Shuttle, he does. Shuttle goes down, but the Nidus falls. That's a pretty big pickoff. 
These Reavers are really low right now. But he's got some army in front of this. Uh, DT's over here doing a great job. They're going to start to pick off these Lurkers, which are aggressing here on the natural. Lurkers running right up on top of this army as well. And I think that we're going to be able to hold on multiple fronts. Both players should be able to hold. We're not getting storms here. What is happening? These Templar are just not casting their storms. Finally, some of them are going to cast, but... I guess he holds on? Wow. Yeah, he is going to hold this. But at the same to by the same token, uh, Effort also holds on to his base here at the 4th. Hmm, that was quite a wild trade. Effort not having an overlord with this army uh, at the initial outset was pretty bad. Uh, really did hurt him there. Now can he get down here and clear this base? I would not uh, bet on it. We've got two Templar with two storms each. Soon to be three. Plus Archons and Zealots. Cannons are going to be finishing up soon too. All right, just a lone drone heading over there. I'm taking a look at the upgrades. 2-1, 3-2, 3-2-1. Pretty good trading here for Shuttle. It's starting to get a little scary. Okay, Dark Swarm over here. Shuttles should be able to pick up these. Oh, just barely not able to pick that up. He really needs to drop the Reaver and actually kill this other Lurker. Very important that he does so. I think he will be able to get that. Army is making its way over here now. He's going to be able to save the space, it appears. Um, big Plague, though. Really great Plague there. To finish off. Should be able to get that. He does. Defiler goes down. Always great for the Protoss to pick one of those off. Time to transfer some workers down here to the bottom right. Um, I think that's going to happen here pretty soon. Things are uh, looking a little bit better for Shuttle now, honestly. Efforts tried a few things and it hasn't really worked out. He hasn't tried drop yet. Maybe that's the next thing. He needs to, to give it a chance here. More trading going on, but it's never really looking that good for Zerg. Uh, unless we can jump on some of these Reavers and actually kill them. Wow, the storms there. So brutal. Shuttle playing an A-class game of keep away here. Even though Effort seemed to be in a really good spot. This army is still growing bigger. And the bottom right can't be held by Effort. It's going to be eventually taken over completely here by Shuttle, I think. Running in, just lots of lings. Some Hydras as well, but Zealot, Archon, DT with Templar and Dragoon support is pretty insane. Super, super good against what Effort's pulling out here. And GG is called. Wow, Effort taps out. He just can't get in there. That is nuts. I'm really shocked that Effort didn't uh, try to play that one out. But I guess he was just locked out of this bottom right. He couldn't get this. And eventually he was going to mine out. Still, having 5k gas in the bank when you leave the game does not feel good. That is, um, that is rough. I'm shocked to see Effort just leave here. It is so frustrating, though, to play against a player uh, who tries this strategy, though. It's really like Effort was playing such a fantastic game of b-ball, and then Effort just wraps his arms around the ball and holds it up against his chest and just says, well, uh, you know, I'm not going to let you score. You can't hold the ball. I'm not going to let you score. He just keeps the ball away. You know, as much as Effort kicks and screams and tries to take the ball away from Shuttle here and, and try to put the ball in the basket and actually play the game, Shuttle just refuses. He curls up in a ball on the ground and holds the, the ball underneath his stomach and he says, no, you're not going to play. And 
Effort just leaves the game. He's just so frustrated. All right, we're going to jump into our next one here. Shuttle, surprising victory over Effort. Putting another point on the board for his squad. Wow, the randomizer has spoken. Organ, once again, going up against Stork. What do you know? That is a shock. Polypoid is our next map. And you don't have the luxury of having a little hidey spot here behind the minerals at the natural stork. What are you going to pull out this game in order to win over Oregon? He's spawning here in the top right hand corner. Should I change the colors? I can't. Excellent. Well, it is what it is. Let me get rid of these two. Um views there we go now we can uh quickly change between the two and again with the gateway in the front all right stork gonna play it one more time he's gonna run it back here send a zealot across the map and see what kind of work he can do organ just gonna chill i think open uh as he normally would barracks right there or right there i think right there is pretty good but barracks right there and then supply depot right there it creates like this really nice um, two-layered defensive area where Marines can walk through and the Zealots can't. Cross map scout after gateway in the front. But he's sick. He's actually going to find him immediately. And yeah, we're going to put some pressure on. We're going to get we're going to get aggressive here. Wow, the barracks at the ramp. Not what I was expecting. There it is. Guess he's going to put the supply depot there instead. Create a little wall here. Uh, but he's got to keep this SCV alive first. And SCV is getting low. 10 HP on that now. Oh, can't quite get the uh, moving shot. Oh, 12. Oh, nice repair. He is all over it. The cross map is a little bit unfortunate here for Stork. He's not going to be able to put on as much pressure as he would have liked. And it's likely that we'll see Oregon uh, go for Gasless Fast Expand here. As he hasn't thrown down that gas yet. And even with the Zealot, as long as you just get enough Marines out and bring uh, SCVs to the ramp, you should be able to push out and put down the uh, bunker here without too much trouble. Zealot Probe action here. Coming across the map right now, we've got the Nexus over at the Natural. I think that uh, he'll probably realize, ah, we're not we're not going to get too much damage done, most likely. It's going to be hard to really do too much with this. Uh, he does get on top of the Marines. A little bit of Miss Micro there from Oregon, in fact. And he loses his SCV to the Probe as well. Excuse me, it's uh, allergy season here in Japan. And I've been getting a little bothered by that. We'll pull ourselves together here. Oh, wait a second. That's not good. The SCVs are trying to mess up the... Okay, actually doing a good job now, but... They do kind of mess up the pathing of the Marines there for a moment. We should be able to get this Zealot. Yeah, I will get that. And he kills the probe as well. But this was quite a bit of damage already from Stork's initial attack. Yeah, this is this is some great damage. Whoa, that SCV gets back with 5 HP. That's crazy. We lost like 3, 4 SCVs, something like that. And about 3 Marines as well. And so there's still not enough Marines to totally handle this Zealot. But with the 4th Marine coming out here, it's pretty one-sided. He should be able to finish that off, no problem. Great job with the probe. Runs forward there and kills that other marine and gets out as well. That was some great micro. Really fantastic stuff there. Sliding forward and just snagging that kill on one of the marines. And now it's again two marines. And two, you know, one zealot and a probe can do a lot against two marines. Two marines takes a long time. There's a third one popping out, but still, three, three marines, still not the greatest. We already saw him fight. You know, uh, four Marines with one Zealot. And I'm just going to run up this ramp. 
Get on top of that. He, oh my god, he gets the Marine. That was a little bit bad. Not pulling that back far enough. And now up here into the main, another Zealot coming forward. Dude, this is starting to get really bad. Stork has done kind of crazy damage at this point. He's still killing uh, Marines, even though this has been going on for so long. And I think he just killed one at the natural. He killed two at the natural, in fact. And he's losing more Marines here in the main. Oh my goodness, he's doing so much work. Mr. Zealot gonna jump on one last Marine. He does get it. A Dragoon makes his way to the front too. And he killed these damaged uh, Marines. He's gonna force them back up into the main. Just fight here, kill off the last Marine. This Zealot going to work here in the main base. Maybe he can get something? No, he gets killed by the tank. Dude, all the Marines are dead. Oh my goodness. We don't even have anything for this bunker. That is wild. Second refinery going to come down here. Double factory follow-up. It's a pretty good follow-up, but we've taken a lot of damage here. We haven't had a chance to look in the base here for Stork for quite some time. But he's going three gate with the re uh, robotics to follow up. He hasn't thrown down a third just yet. But that'll be coming shortly here. Um, There's the robotic support bay as well. So going into Reaver. Not as uh, good with the Reaver, I would say. You know, Sork is an interesting character. His micro is almost second to none. Especially back in these days. But his macro tends to slip a little bit. So, I, you know, I want to say that he's not quite as good as Snow with Reaver micro and stuff like that. But... The thing that makes Snow so damn good is that he's able to do everything and all the Reaver Micro. And I don't think that Stork's really able to do that. Coming in here, going to try to get in the midst of these dra Dragoons. He actually does get one mine off. And three Dragoons fall in quick succession. Two more Zealots pop out, but that's not really what you need in this situation. Oregon might be able to get in here and deal some critical damage right now. The probes are going to be pulled to try and fight against these Vultures right now. Oh, the mine! Oh, <laughs> How did that not go off? That is crazy. Another Reaver shot here. That Reaver coming in so clutch. Wow. That is crazy. Oh. Oh. The Reaver goes down. Wait. He didn't pick that up. That's so big. Not picking that up right there is massive. He makes another pylon for the wall to make this a little bit harder to get in. But it cancels. He cancels it. Okay, I think he holds now. Gotta target down that one mine. That one mine. Oh, he does get it. That was big. Picks up his drag guns just to make sure that they don't trigger the mine. Uh, might lose a few more probes here. Maybe. Oh, the mine there. I didn't even see that one, but it does so much work. Kills two more drag guns, and there's only one tank left here, but the rallies of vultures is actually maybe going to make it work. Well, a couple probes going to go down right now. Dragons do pop out though. And with this many dragons coming out, it's four gate dragoon right now. So, I mean, that's a lot of dragons to work with. I'm gonna drag this mine. Does end up losing that. But maybe he can track down this one more tank. He's actually right clicked on it. He does get it. That was a good move by Stork. Really good move there to get that last tank. Needed a big win there. And this, this has really reset the tank count for Oregon, who's, um, you know, sitting back at home, kind of licking his wounds here. Whereas Stork immediately going to go into his Nexus. What's the follow up here? What is the follow up? A dropship. Gonna try and get some damage going uh, and try to out multitask Stork. You can see his APM leaves a little bit something to be desired, right? That's why I say that he's. Uh, great with the control. You can see in that fight, he was doing very, very well. And he did manage to hang on, but... Did he uh, macro perfectly behind that? Maybe not. Maybe not. It doesn't look like he had a whole lot of things to macro here. Of course, just just pumping out Dragoons and... Um, you know, maybe making a few probes here and there. But you can see Oregon is ahead in workers. 
and that 250 APM just not able to keep up with the nearly 400 here of Oregon. And this is going to make things worse. He's going to start to get some damage here in the natural. Three probes, four probes go down. More probes here in the main. Oh, another probe goes down. Oh man, that's so many probes. Look at that, 10 worker advantage now. 10 workers here for Oregon up over Stork. And he should be able to push out and take a third very soon. He's got up met coming with five factories. That's definitely enough to take a third. Dropship gonna loop back around and maybe come into the main potentially. Maybe drop here. Not a bad idea either. Get a few more kills. Yeah, gonna get at least two more. And runs out with the dropship as well into the main base. Gonna come in for a little bit more damage. This is great play from Oregon. He is just crushing it with the kills right now. So many probes have gone down. That is wild. And he's gonna get out. What a cheeky bugger. All right, that will go down finally. Oh! Stork spending so much time to actually pick this off, but it's definitely worth it. Just get rid of that. Pesky, pesky dropship. Setting up mines everywhere. Making sure that there's no easy option for Stork to take a fourth. And he is going to take his third here very soon, I think. Or is he just going to go all in? I don't know. If he went all in, I think he'd go to seven factory at this point. I feel this is going to be a science facility type of game. We're going for a more upgrades it's 11 minute 50 They're coming out to take the game to take the the third base but you have to remember how much damage has been done in this game how much pressure was put out onto stork oh these tanks are really stacked up this might be a mistake here stork is gonna come in good target fire onto some of these shuttles he is targeting with the wraith as well oh that reaver shot though might have just changed the entire game running over this army right now Oregon is gonna get forced all the way back his tanks were way too stacked in this fight they got annihilated by the splash damage of his own tanks and of the reaver shots here from stork and stork gonna run up kill this tank on the high ground and continue to push forward here he's gonna get a ton of damage a little bit of harass coming from piano right now dealing some probe kills but dude this is so bad right now we're gonna get one more tank. Can he siege us up? Siege up, siege up, Oregon. You're losing workers, but you're still ahead. 51 to 43. It's still doable. If he builds a CC on high ground here and gets out and does a little bit more harassment, maybe it's possible to bring this one back. But after that many losses of tanks, it is just looking so rough. So, so rough at this point. Still, worker advantage here. CC gonna start. More tanks and vultures being incremented out. More upgrades coming here as well, of course. Don't have plus two though. Oh, oh, that really hurts. We've got way more than enough money for that. It's not like he's lacking in gas or minerals, but he doesn't have that started. I really feel like he missed it. There it is, it starts now. The later that is, the harder it's going to be to hold. He has to hold this next base. He's got to move out. Set up tanks on high ground. Set up mines perfectly. Build extra buildings. He's going to put turrets up all over the place. He has to hold this third now. It's really, truly now or never. You must hold this third. Meanwhile, Stork building his own nexus. He's going in for a drop. Templar drop here at the natural. Are we going to get big storms? Oh, some excellent damage here. Killing off a ton of workers and dropping down Oregon's SCV count below his now 54 to 42. So switching the script here, changing it up, putting Oregon in a deficit now in terms of those workers. He will get the third online, however, though. That third is an inevitability at this point. And we will go into a long game. Stork. 
Can he get more damage like that? Will Organ be able to max out? I think he should be. But Stork might actually try to break the third. He could do it if the tanks are going to be this stacked. This is two storms and four tanks are dead. Five tanks if he sieges that one up right next to it. Moving forward and taking a look. Seeing what kind of uh, engagement he can take here. Quite a few mines in the front. Looks like we had another drop over here, but it got cleaned up. Pretty even on those worker counts now. I guess he did kill a little more than I thought. 46 to 50. Getting a few extra kills there. Pretty nice for Oregon. Oregon taking a look around. Or sorry, Stork taking a look around the outside of this natural. Can he find a way in here? Is there an opening to exploit? He thinks so. He's going to go for it. These tanks are way too stacked up. This is really, really bad. The storms are going to be insane. Oh my goodness. The storms are so damn good here. These tanks at the back could actually be stormed as well, but there's no more zealots here to actually storm those and i think we're gonna have that push back okay stork actually needs to leave right now um staying a little bit too long and he's gonna pick up his archon and run away kind of funny um i don't know what he's gonna do with that but he's gonna keep it he's gonna keep it alive maybe drop it on a couple of tanks or something i don't know it's only got 16 HP. Oh, drop it. Oh, oh, can he get it? Oh, he gets a tank. Look at that. And he gets an SCV too. Hey, not bad. Hero Archon there. At least a uh, hero Archon in terms of TVP. You rarely ever see an Archon kill anything in this matchup, but there you have it. Getting some damage. Dragon count very low, but Stork has a, a 50 supply advantage. Should be able to do something with it. Just macroing out here. One problem I see with Stork right now is that he doesn't have another uh, main base on the map right now to exploit. Another path for uh, his units to be rallied out of. Great storm here from the low ground. Very uh, precarious area here. Difficult to defend this spot uh, as a Terran player and very abusive to drop storms like right here as well. And we've kind of covered that on the side of Oregon. He is getting into plus three now. So moving up here towards plus three is a big deal. I'm going to get into plus three pretty soon. And then Oregon's army will get uh, exponentially stronger as it grows larger. And... Well, I mean, these trades are good. It's really going to lower the uh, uh, army count once again for Oregon. He's losing a lot of his vultures right now. Doing some pretty good trading here, though. Wow. Killing so many zealots that are trying to chase this. This is why you don't uh, put everything on mixed hotkeys. You want to bring dragoons to actually kill uh, vultures and mines. Uh, rather than, you know, sending in just everything and letting all the zealots run into the mines and... I get eaten up by the vultures, but Stork really needs to get this online before plus three is done and this fourth base is up. It looks like Oregon is going to have this fourth base pretty much no matter what at this point. He will get this up. And Stork, he has to get this online because that army is building. We're at 100 supply, so still a very long way away. But we need gateways in this bottom right. We need gateways down here ASAP. This dropship being kind of annoying. Doesn't have anything in it, but just kind of hovering there. Being a little bit of a menace to Stork. A thorn in his side. A spike in his psyche. There we go. Going to send that probe up. Start to lay down some gateways in this area. Um, We've just reset the tank count so many times. And wow, we're at 37 workers. How did that happen? Um, I guess maybe there was another storm drop. I actually didn't see it. I will picture in picture and throw it in. Because that's definitely something I missed. How did we get to 37? That's wild. That was a lot of dead SCVs somewhere. 
during a little bit more action happening on the map. Tank's gonna spread out here. A very good idea against storm composition. We do not want to be eating any more big storms like we had earlier. Yeah, look at how much more spread out he is. I think he's learned his lesson, guys. Organ here, sitting on top of his own mines, though. That's not a good look. You really want to start to kill these. Because, I mean, one zealot dropped right there could actually wipe out two, three tanks. Um, <clears throat> see if that ends up happening here, because he hasn't cleared those out, and here comes that shuttle. Well, he doesn't have any zealots in there, but he's got Templar ready to go. There's a pretty good storm. Ooh, killing a lot of vultures with that storm. He's not moving the vultures either. And I think Stork is actually just going to bowl him over. This is way too much stuff. Yeah, this is way too much Protoss. My Oregon might actually be able to live, but... Yeah, at what cost? He's going to lose everything. He still has the base in the center right. And this base was getting kind of low. No, it's still got a lot of money here. What am I saying? GG is called Organ Taps Out. No hope left for this man. And Stork takes another win over him. Wow, Stork might be Organ's um, kryptonite, man. How did he manage to beat him twice in a row? Uh, with some really nice early game pressure, that's how. I guess I'll answer my own question. He just punished him really badly with the early zealots and a kind of lackluster marine control was the downfall of organ here truly uh, the attack into the natural of stork was wild though that was like a real nail biter some of the mines that could have gone off and killed you know half the probes at that base um you know might have actually changed this game completely but it didn't end up happening that way we had a lot of good storm drops that end up killing a lot of tanks and obviously a lot of SCVs as well, just slowing down and slowing down Oregon over and over again. We didn't even get to that point where we needed another base down here in the bottom right because he kept diving on top of that army. And even if we've got three and two, uh, three attack, two armor, it's still not enough to hold on against a maxed Protoss when you're only at like 100 supplies. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Even though it's very, very strong... I mean, there are limits to the mech upgrades and what they can provide. Anyways, guys, we've got another game here. Another point on the board for Stork's team. We're going to move on to our next game that's coming right up. Again, the randomizer gives us a banger of a match. We've got Flash versus Effort for this final. It is all tied up here. This is the last match. It is a best of seven here in round number one. And then in round number two, another best of seven. It'll be King of the Hill format next time. But who will win the randomizer segment? Who will win round number one? We're about to find out here. This rematch from the ASL. What was that? Season eight? If I remember correctly which I rarely do. It was season six where Flash was taken down by effort. I believe that's the only time Flash was beaten in the finals of an ASL. Yeah, that was his only loss in the finals. Of course, other players took him out at earlier stages, but in that ASL finals, like best of seven, Flash is king. He just just almost never loses, but I mean effort, the only guy to take him down. He broke that win or that uh, that streak from Flash. And here he's looking to steal away a win from Flash's squad. Let's see what he's going to bring out here. We've got a 12 hatch coming from effort. And a barracks in the main here from Flash. No 12 CC or anything like that. Or 14 CC. CC first was the calling card of Flash for a long time in his career. He was the one who really made it work. As a build in professional play. And he forced it through like a square peg into a round hole. Made it happen. 
Even when it wasn't working for the longest time, he figured it out. Slowly but surely, he's not going to pull it out here. Instead, going to go for the much more standard and reliable one Rax FE. And he might even get this drone. Oh, that was close. That was really, really close there. But the drone does manage to snake itself away. And we're going for a three hatch build. Now the three hatch build, very, very different from the more modern 2.5 hatch. This is a build where you get the third hatcher in main before the extractor. And uh, it's kind of been phased out. It's not really a thing anymore. People rarely ever use it. Uh, especially in professional play. You might find it on the ladder here and there, but mostly you're going to be looking at 2.5 hatch or two hatch. Um, but this it was a strong build for a while. It's just kind of been figured out by Terran players. There's a lot of ways to abuse it. we got a sunken here at the front just to make sure that naked Marines can't do anything and he can fully drone without being worried about, you know, taking any damage. We have the layer on the way now. It just gives you a much, much later uh, layer and therefore Spire and Mutalist timing. It's supposed to give you a stronger Mutalist timing. Like it comes a bit later, but you have a lot more Mutas. You're supposed to be able to pop like nine Mutas, right? Uh, as all of that finishes. Or sorry. Yeah, nine Mutas. Eight, nine Mutas, something like that. But... Um, oh, a Hydra Den starts in the natural. Wait a minute. What is this? Three hatch before gas into Hydra Den. Okay. Uh, we have to reevaluate here. This is going to be uh, a lurker play coming here from effort, and it might get scouted. Is he going to see it? Let's see. Flash, not spotting that just yet. Going into second racks right now, a third racks on the way as well. Uh, and this is the, the best way to play against the, um, the three hatch before gas is you just start your plus one and go like four or five racks. It's very strong. Let's see, can you see it? He does not see the Hydra Den. This is this could be big. This could be big, guys. You can see he's really waiting on adding those commsats for as long as possible here. Oops. Not wanting to, uh, you know, waste any time. Um, when you build a commsat, you miss out on two SCVs. So he's trying to just maximize his SCV count. And you can see he's done a great job of that, getting up to 36. His commsat just going to start now. And we've got Hydra's already out here, immediately into Queen's Nest. A Spire as well. Wow. Spire, Queen's Nest, and Evolution Chamber. And what, no Lurker? Oh my god, what am I looking at right now? What is this abomination? Scan in the main. Queen's Nest, Evolution Chamber, and he sees the Spire wasn't done. He's like, what? What is going on right now? This is madness effort. I really don't know what to think of this right now. He scans again. What does he see? No, he scanned bottom right-hand corner. He sees no base over there. I'm going to send uh, SCV over to the top left. He will find that. Effort going to send Lurker, or... Hydra's out. I guess he did upgrade Lurker. He must have, right? There's no point in getting this Hydra den so early and getting Hydra's out if you didn't make Lurker. That makes no sense at all. Um, a factory starts, of course, but f just pure 5 racks. It's so good. I think this is the actual reason why we don't th see 3 hatch before gas anymore. 5 racks is just so strong against it. You have so many Marines. And look, you didn't even have to build turrets, man. No turrets here at all. So he is going to have so many Marines. He doesn't have Lurker. <laughs> he doesn't have it. Uh, I didn't miss it. He actually just didn't build it. And now he's going to lose a, a Hydra out in the middle of the map. Okay, this might be one of the most anticlimactic um, final matches a, uh, of a round of Pro League. 
it, it might actually be i don't know we haven't seen them all of course but this is this is looking pretty anticlimactic here it's been such a great series back and forth back and forth all the games up until this point six games thus far and my voice is starting to get a little bit sore after this game i'm gonna take a break and i'll uh put the second round in a different video but i think we're actually just gonna go to that second round i think the flash is just gonna win because this is so weird effort i uh, something's gone wrong wires have been crossed this hatcher is gonna go down i mean we're gonna dive on this but it's a minute too late and like we're gonna lose a ton of uh, a ton of mutas oh, mutas coming up they're gonna get eviscerated and yeah something something just went totally wrong here can he actually come up yeah he can actually come up the ramp oh my god it's so bad oh it's so painful to watch yeah yeah okay there you go effort can he block it okay he did block it now thank goodness thought he was gonna mess that up again did he make a drone yeah he made a drone so he can technically make another base he can technically hold here but i mean this is flash we're talking about you can't make this many early mistakes and expect to come back this man will absolutely wreck you this guy doesn't know what the meaning of mistake is never made a mistake in his life dude flash absolute god flash would have won you've heard of it he's gonna come over to to the natural right now and see what he can't do against effort uh in his natural he's actually got no lurkers here so maybe you can just kill him um probably not with this many lings behind it would be a little bit uh perhaps suicidal to just dive in there so he's just gonna kind of contain here and if the lings move, if the lings leave, then, you know, he could probably just break that. All right, two lurkers here now. Looks like effort will stabilize. He does have a pretty good amount of drones, of course. Oh, here we go. He's going to dive in. I was thinking about it anyway. Lings heading up over to the top left. He spotted the drops coming in. And so he will bring lings to deal with that. Scourge going to be brought forward to help handle this. That's a lot of lings coming in, but the Scourge get picked off before they can actually connect. The Lurkers are going to unburrow and run over here, but the Marines are just going to bail out. And yeah, he can just avoid this. Oh man, Flash, he's just too good, dude. Look at this, he's going to come up with that other force, and I think this is the end, man. Great spread, oh my goodness. Dude. Perfectly done absolutely perfect effort is down and out right now he really doesn't have too much of a shot at this point he's got the defiler uh mound but yeah he taps out gg absolutely taken apart here but something something got crossed the wires got uh crisscrossed here for effort i really don't know what he was thinking in this game like let's just go back a little bit and try to unpack a little bit of what happened here he made the hydrogen he hit it very well um but then he started a spire it's like he forgot that he made a hydrogen it, it it really is it's like that or maybe he didn't he definitely saw the natural like what was he thinking there was going to be wraiths or something i'm really confused as to what he thought was going to happen in this game like he definitely got in there right he definitely brought the yeah see he sees the the mining here well, it's not like he thought there was going to be uh you know double um wraith play or something like that he sends the drone out he just never started this he's like okay i'm gonna send my hydras over here my hydras get caught 
I thought he was going to send the hydras up onto the high ground, but they just don't go over there. And then he loses the hatch. Yeah, this is perplexing, guys, to me. How effort uh, went so wrong here. But hey, even pro players can make big mistakes sometimes. Uh, just not flash, though, dude. This guy's perfect. It's kind of crazy. Um, he sees all the holes. He sees all the gaps in your game, and he just knows exactly what to do. This is one of the most frustrating things in the world, though. It's like everything has gone wrong. Things have just been absolutely falling apart from the moment, from the first moments here. And Flash is going to get past this egg because the egg didn't block the ramp properly. Oh my gosh. You just want to hang your head and cry at this point as a Zerg player, honestly. This is so bad. But uh, great moves by Flash, man. He takes it away for his squad. No surprise there. But we'll see if Effort's team can bring things back in round number two. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Comment your favorite game from this series. I hope you're enjoying the Pro League. Um, I hope that we're going to get a lot more of these guys. But make sure to support. All the links are down in the description. And I'll see you in the next video.